Hola mi amigos y familia, this is my little weekly vlog installment for you, news from Panama. So last week I told you we were able to leave the city and we moved down to this house by the beach and it's fantastic. So the quarantine restrictions in this part of the country, we're now in Panama Oeste, are exactly the same as the city. So we've been now in quarantine for, I don't know, I've totally lost count. I'll put it in the description down below. I think it's like maybe 21 weeks. It's um, coming into the sixth month now and I still haven't surfed since February trying to find a surfboard here now so that I'm ready when the restrictions are lifted. Uh, that's proving to be not as easy as I thought. And some news, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's really annoying. They've decided, they being the government, have decided that they're going to make stand-up paddleboarding a permitted activity. Some of my friends might know my opinion on SUPS. And so you can understand how I feel about this, because surfing is still apparently a crime, but you can go stand up paddleboarding. It makes no sense. This makes absolutely no sense, but it gets worse. Even if you did want to go supping, which I don't, you're only allowed to go in your allocated time on your allocated day. And just to reiterate, it's still the same. I'm only allowed to leave the house for two hours on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Caesar's only allowed to leave the house for two hours on Tuesday and Thursday. No one's allowed to leave the house at all. I think countrywide, Saturday and Sunday is full quarantine for everyone. And so that's not how the waves and tide and wind works. You have to go supping, or preferably surfing, when the waves are working because that's what you're going for and you can't tell the ocean to schedule it for my time please and even worse with the quarantine restrictions Caesar and I can't go out together oh, it's so frustrating but anyway at least there's some movement toward maybe I can go surfing one day so I really hope that the allowing supping is some small movement toward releasing restrictions on when I can go out and what I can do when I go out because I tell you what if they don't release restrictions soon like I said last week Barbados is looking quite attractive possibly Costa Rica but I think Costa Rica still has surfing as a crime which is nuts because surfing should never be a crime okay so that's the news I have some other very very good news we had an answer for our visa, yay, they've given us our visa, so we are now legally permanent residents of Panama. They're going to let us stay, folks. They checked us out and well, they're like, yeah, you guys are okay, you can stay. Yay, thanks. Although, you know, I don't know right now how much longer I'll stay. Um, Got to surf at some stage. They have the quarantine to try and control the spread of the virus, but sadly, it's just not working. I don't know how many more months they can try and keep people locked up. It's clearly not working. And at this point in the whole process, after over five months of keeping people locked up and shutting down the economy, it's now having a really horrible effect on people's, obviously people's ability to make an income and to stretch out what little they may have had is probably for many, many people here in this country gone. The government help has not been enough for many people and people are starving. That's the reality. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's sad. I read in one of the Panamanian uh, news outlets this week that doctors are noticing more and more elderly people presenting a hospital with symptoms of starvation. That's heartbreaking. I just, I mean, I wish this government would on the one hand, I think they need to open up the economy. They just need to do it so that people can make a living and people can feed themselves. Um, but on the other hand, if they do that, they know if they do that, the number of coronavirus cases is going to increase and the hospital system's gonna be overwhelmed. The number of people in hospital is worryingly high. The highest it's ever been, it's over 1,500. The number of people in ICU, last time I looked, was under 160. 
So, I mean, I hope the people, I hope more people are getting better. I mean, more people are, but the death toll climbs. But it's, yeah, it's the overwhelming of the healthcare system that's a problem because, you know, if that happens, quite obviously, if you get sick from anything else, there will be no healthcare for you. So it won't just be people dying from coronavirus, it'll be people dying from other illnesses or accidents or whatever because there's not enough health care for people. So that could be really sad. I still don't think Panama's peaked regarding the this wave of um, coronavirus. I don't think it's on the way down. It's concerning. Okay, I've got two random observations. Slightly amusing, possibly, I don't know, to show you this week. So here's the first one. <laughs> so we found some of this stuff in the first, very first apartment we stayed in. And I see it in the supermarkets in this house that we're renting now. This had some. This is what they use here in Panama. I've never seen this before in my life. This is what they use to do dishes. It's a paste, not a liquid. You get your damp dish sponge or whatever, and you put it in the paste, and then you clean your dishes with it. That's different. I shall not be using that, because uh, to me that's rather weird. Okay, first random observation. Second random observation is maybe slightly a wee rant. The system they have here in the supermarkets with the trolleys doesn't make any sense. And my poor little Kiwi brain is trying to wrap itself around the Latin American logic, if that's what it is. So in New Zealand, you have your shopping and your trolley, you get to the checkout, you stand in front of your trolley, you load your things from the trolley to the conveyor belt. The person behind you did the same, so their trolley was behind them, it's now empty, that now becomes the trolley that your packed groceries go into. There's usually someone there to pack them, or the checkout operator usually packs them, and then you just lift them up and put them into the empty trolley, and then you wheel it out to the car park, load your stuff into your car, put the trolley in a trolley bay in the car park, and off you go. And they have staff who collect the trolleys from the trolley bays in the car park and take it back to the inside of the checkout. So you only need, probably for a big supermarket, maybe three or four people doing that, but often one or two. But here in Panama, it's different. And I think I got told off, although, or yo hablo espanol un muy poquito. Mm, hablo espanol muy mal. Poco y poco is getting better, but I don't often know what people are saying to me, so I'm using body language, which is difficult when we're all wearing masks, but anyway, so I'm trying to do the same thing here. No, got told off. What you do here is you take your stuff out of your trolley and you leave your trolley behind you. You push it out of the way. And then they have a staff member who collects all the discarded trolleys from behind the checkouts and puts them back in the trolley bay inside the supermarket. And so the person before you did the same thing. So they, there's no trolley in front of you. And so sometimes there's a person to pack your groceries, but what happens is, and this is happening to me about half of the time, the person who packs the groceries packed the person in front of my, me, packed their groceries, and then they wheel their trolley out to the car park. And so now there's no trolley and no person to pack the groceries. So I'm packing my own groceries, but there's no trolley to put the groceries into. And now I'm trying to pick up all my bags and get myself out to the car park or to walk back home. Sometimes there's a person to pack my groceries and then they go and find a trolley and bring it to put the groceries into. This is a really inefficient system unless, and I wonder, maybe it's their system because they're doing it to employ more people because it does seem to take more people to do this. Maybe that's their goal. I don't know, but it's confusing. It's very confusing for me. Okay, so we're um, acquainting ourselves with the wildlife in our little garden here, and it seems there is a resident lizard of some description. He lives just over there in the bougainvillea vine that climbs up the side of the house. Man, he's given me a fright a couple of times. He's about this big. I haven't got some very good photos or footage of him yet. I've named him Bob. And so I'm going to show you um, some footage of Bob in our garden <laughs> and some of the interesting things about Bob. 
There's also some really beautiful birds around and oh, geckos, little geckos about this big um, change their colour and camouflage themselves and if they see you they don't like you and they will run away so fast man but we've got one now living in our bedroom underneath our bed and it chirps at night they start chirping like little baby bird sounds when the sun goes down so cute I quite like the geckos um, the no see I don't like them they keep biting me so sadly I'm having to use some insect spray around the place that, which I really don't like because that kills the good insects as well um, leaving the geckos alone because apparently they kill the mosquitoes which is fantastic have hardly been bitten by mosquitoes as a consequence possibly the geckos are getting them um, dragonflies everywhere and man they're huge moths the size of your head uh, what else yeah I'll see I mean I'll see if if I can get some good footage of the wildlife around here particularly one of those cute little geckos but yeah those guys move super fast so okay that's all from me some footage of wildlife to follow and that's all that's all I have to say this week ciao this is the um, giant poo that we're finding around the place just so you can see how big this is I mean you know it's a decent size we're finding this around the place in the morning and I've just seen the owner or the creator of it it's a large lizard kind of thing and he's been living up in the Bougainvillea but he's just climbed up away onto our roof this is such a novelty because we don't have anything well no we've got tuatara in New Zealand but I've never seen one and they're nocturnal anyway oh you're scaring him away oh it's gone into his tree won't see him again for another hour when the rain comes these millipedes come out and these guys are nasty you see how many there are and they're highlighted against the white concrete but none of the birds want anything to do with them and nor do I I think they bite I think they're really unpleasant this week's video is um, something I haven't named yet I don't know maybe someone watching could suggest a name it's again my favorite a gin concoction this is something I made myself and this is how I'm going to make it so I've got an ice shaker full of about half full of ice a glass full of ice I've got some good quality London dry gin I have some Saint Germain elderflower liqueur and I have some Contro I have some but wait this is something I prepared earlier some lime juice that I just squeezed and I've got a bit of cucumber okay and I've got my recipe so I need my measures in this cocktail shaker I'm gonna put one ounce of gin one ounce of lime juice I forgot there's one other ingredient sugar syrup I'm gonna give it a really 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 small dash of sugar syrup half an ounce Contro, half an ounce of elderflower liqueur. And give it a shake. Now I make a really annoying noise that sees it doesn't like. Okay. Until the outside of the cocktail shaker gets all frosty. Just slice a little bit of, just a couple of slices of cucumber. Shove those in the top. I'm going to pour it over the cucumber into the ice packed glass. And then I'm going to charge it with some soda water. Thanks, Canada. Give it a little bit of a stir, shove the cucumber in there a bit, and then drink it. This is the best part. Go. Okay. Mmm, it's refreshing. It's light and fresh. It's not too boozy, and it's not bitter. I don't like anything bitter, and it's. Just a really refreshing summer cocktail. So there's this week's cocktail. Let me know if any of you try it what you think of it.